I'm like, I'm going to be Clark Griswold getting all angry about my uh, Jelly of the Month Club. Yeah. He's like, he scoops it. He's like, oh, that's good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Chop and Brew. I'm Chip Walton. I'm here with Vince Green. Hey, everybody. Why are we here? Because it's like... Half Christmas, it's belated half Christmas. Belated, yeah, a little bit. It's still Christmas in July. The real reason we're here is to enjoy some homemade eggnog in early July. Early July. Made by Vince last year. And we want to let you know what it tastes like. And more than anything, we want to encourage people to make it. Because now is the time to make it, right? Definitely. So come along with us and our half Christmas Christmas tree and our Griswold family mugs as we dig in to eggnog. This nogged out episode of Chop and Brew is brought to you with support from our friends at Imperial Yeast, now shipping out of facilities on both the west and east coast. And the Chop and Brew Patreon party people. You know they like to get in the holiday spirit even in the middle of summer. Join them and keep the show strong at patreon.com slash chop and brew. So tell me about homemade eggnog. I, I, I will disclose real quick. As a kid, I absolutely loved eggnog. I would go through many, what is that, a half, a quart, half gallon, whatever. Sure. Like every holiday season. But as an adult, my wife doesn't particularly care for eggnog. So I get like one and that's kind of like the one I get, and but I've never had an eggnog with as much booze in it as it sounds like we're about to get here. It's got a fair amount of booze and a fair amount of age on it. Tell me about adult eggnog. Adult eggnog. So this <laughs> this recipe started as an Alton Brown recipe. Yeah. Um, and it's got uh, three cups of booze, uh, f three pints of dairy, which includes uh, half and half. A pint of uh, whole milk and a pint of heavy cream and uh, a pound of sugar, <laughs> 12 egg yolks, and a little nutmeg, a little salt. What are the spirits? I, I used uh, Wild Turkey 101 and uh, just plain Bacardi rum and then I used a Jamaican rum, Myers Jamaican rum. And I, I would recommend a Jamaican rum. Uh, Jamaican rum have a little funk to them. Mm -hmm. They're they're naturally uh, naturally fermented, so there's a little wild yeast in them. Oh, okay. So that's what I would recommend. Well, we're drinking it out of the stylistic, appropriate Wally the Moose Griswold family mug. Shout out to Andy at Bad Cheers. Weather for hooking us up with these. So who's Cousin Eddie and who's Clark? Because we look so much like both like Cousin Eddie. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. So you made this... Last summer, a year ago. I made this in mid-October, so mm. I guess it's coming on nine months. Right. And then you gifted it to folks like myself, appreciate it, Yep. for the holidays 2020. Uh, I did dry January, so it kind of like moved to the back of the fridge, and then I just forgot about it. And then all of a sudden I saw that you were making this year's batch last week, and I was like, Oh, this is the like best opportunity because we're going to drink it aged. We could talk about the recipe, uh, but how does it stand up versus, you know, what you might have just drank around Christmas last year? It's definitely smoother. Uh, when it's fresh, it's a, it's a lot hotter. Like from the booze? From the booze, okay. which, which I would expect to happen. I guess the flavors all just kind of meld together a little more over the time. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, I can taste... I, kind of what you're saying, that dark rum character to it is very nice. It doesn't taste like as fake. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, I mean, I don't know what a real eggnog would taste like <laughs> back in the day, but the stuff you get in like the Land of Lakes, Court or whatever, it tastes delicious. I love it. It's so viscous though, and that's why Elsa doesn't like it. She's like, it tastes like pancake batter. You know what I mean? It's like sure. you could almost pour that onto a griddle and cook it. This is thinner. Even with all that dairy, I assume because there's three cups of booze in it. Three, yeah, three, so, pi three pints. So what is a bag size? So you gave me a freaking bomber. What was the bag size? I think I had a growler, you know, 64 ounces plus about 
A quart. Oh, so this bottle's like a good part of a yield of a batch. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, that's super nice. So what? <laughs> I didn't know that till right now. So if you were gonna make a batch of this and you wanted to gift it to folks, say in holiday 2021. Would it be smarter to put it in 12 ounce bottles or maybe even find some like antique six or eight ounce bottles or just, I guess you could always just scale the batch up. Yeah, you could scale the batch up. Um, I would think, you know, if you're gifting it to a, to a single, per 12 ounces is probably good. A six, ounce, a six ounce drink for two people would probably be good for a couple. I mean, because it's got a lot of booze in it, so it's going to get you where you need to be. Get yeah. you in the holiday spirit. If you had to guess, is this in the upper teens, the lower 20s? I would think it would be in the upper teens, probably. I mean, I guess you could calculate it out. You, you, know, the, you know the proof of each of the, of the boozes you put in. Right. And, uh, and then you know how much liquid there is. So you could, if you were a math whiz, mm. you could probably do it. You could. That sounds like a lot of work. It does sound like a lot of work. I'd rather drink. So real quick, we'll post your inspired revision of the, of the AB... Recipe, Alton Brown, not Anheuser-Busch. Yeah, there you go. But tell me just kind of quickly, what can people expect to do? Well, you're going you're gonna to crack 12 eggs and separate the whites. And then you're going to add a pound of sugar to the egg yolks. Mix it in a KitchenAid or a whisk or whatever until the color yeah. lightens up a little bit. And it, it streams off the, the whisk in a, a single stream. And mix all the... Uh, spirits together and i suppose you could choose any spirit but yeah. uh but the spirits mix the three spirits together three cups and add them together slowly mix it up and then bottle it up that's all there's to it a little salt little uh nutmeg really okay yep. the thing that surprised me is like so nothing curdles right with all that dairy in there hitting all of that booze i don't know my my food lab science enough but i would have thought there'd be some curdling in there but there's nothing like this there's, is smooth no, and beautiful there's, there's no curdling um it must not be acidic enough right isn't acid kind of what makes a curdle i think acid makes a curdle i tried to mix i can't remember what it was but i tried to mix a drink with bailey's and it might have had a little lemon in lemon it lemon or yeah, lime there you go now, yep. you, now you have a cement mixer <laughs> <laughs> So the other question I had was like, why, how the hell does this last so long? And you had a couple of theories about why this preserves, because you didn't like bottle this and then like pasteurize it. No. No. I think uh, the alcohol is probably the biggest thing. And then I think the sugar, uh, which is used for preserves and whatnot, as long as you don't get a lot of uh, moisture in with the sugar, it does a good job of preserving. Uh, Back in the day, they used to call it uh, sugaring, uh, and that was a preservative. Oh, like so instead I think, of pickling, it was sugaring. Yeah, and I think if it stays dry, as long as you don't get moisture in it, I think it, uh, it preserves well. So this combination of spirits tastes quite dandy, and it pours like a Bailey's, I should say. So these spirits go together. What would be the most disgusting blend of spirits you could think about for Te one of these? Tequila. <laughs> yeah. I don't think tequila would go well with it. Uh... <laughs> mezcal smoked sure. eggnog every yeah day. right a mezcal would be bad um and, and maybe uh, uh an isla scotch that, oh. probably, that probably wouldn't be very good or an aqua v yeah yeah aqua v would be bad <laughs> do you like dill spicings in your eggnog there you go i don't no <laughs> there's something so like cereal to the like this tastes like the best version of like uh, the cereal milk at the bottom of a bowl of maybe like Captain Crunch. Sure. There's something almost malty sweet to this. Um, oh, that's crazy. That's so good. Captain Morgan's instead of Captain Crunch. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, a spice rum might be good too. I'd say it was pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to enjoy it at the holidays, I'd probably mix it now. Um, because it does it does smooth out a little bit. It's definitely better with some age on it. Okay. Um, Alton Brown says there's no reason you couldn't age it for a year or more, and and I I guess I agree with that because yeah. it hasn't it hasn't shown any degradation at all. So mm -mm. it is very smooth. Um, the spirits are dangerously low in the mix. Yes. Although they're they're there supporting it. I'm sure some of that maltiness that I'm getting is more from the spirit than obviously three kinds of dairy, but. 
Mm. Does it taste better from a, a Wally the Moose mug? Yeah, I think it does a little bit. I do bit. too. <laughs> I've never... It's so funny when you see like... I'm not going to call them beer snobs, but like beer aficionados, you know, they hold it from the rim or wine people. I feel like this glass must be held by the antler. I kind of feel like all glasses should have an antler. <laughs> what you know about that barrel aged eggnog? So now you're talking. See, but that would, I don't know. I feel like it's got to be cold. Yeah. That's a good question. Do you keep it? Uh, this has been cold this has since been cold. Christmas last year. Yep. Uh, there's, so there's there's people that you've probably read about on on uh, Facebook and Chop and Brew that have that have kind of done a Solara type thing with their eggnog. Yeah. And uh, so that's you know over the years. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> so it, it's it, it tends to keep you know you drink a bunch of it you make a new batch you pour some in there and uh, and let it go. I can't remember. Are those people doing it in wood, or are they doing it in some kind of... I don't think they're doing it in wood, but... Probably in glass. Glass. Wood would be interesting. Mm. So we might have to look into that. I know you can buy, like, little one-gallon barrels. Sure. Maybe we get, like, a one-gallon barrel, hit it with a bunch of Myers or Appleton rum, take that out, put this in. All right, Vince Green, we're going to put the, the recipe up. We're going to suggest people... To mix it up sometime between like August and October of this year and then enjoy, enjoy it. for the holidays. Give away. Save some for next summer. Chop for chop. Brew for brew. <laughs> nog, nog for, for nog. nog. Park's closed. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the moose, sir. Park's closed. Can I pour you another eggnog? Hell yeah, man. Shout out Clark Griswold for having a giant bowl of eggnog <laughs> at Christmas at room temperature. Yes. <laughs> that guy don't care. And he don't care either. I know. And they're just like scooping it. <sighs> Ooh.